When looking at limits of a function, there's two approaches we're going to look at. We're going to look at an intuitive approach to explain what a limit is, but we will also be looking at the precise definition of a limit. So when we talk about limits of a function, if we have a function f of x, what we are looking at is as x comes very close to specific value, are my function values, you can think of it as your y values, are those values approaching a specific value? So when we talk about a limit, we do not want to see what the function value is at the value p. We want to see what the function value is very close to p. So let's look at this example. I've got a function y equal to f of x, x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 1. Now, we want to factorize the denominator. Then we see we've got x minus 1, x plus 1. Now, do not be tempted by canceling out the x minus 1s, because if I cancel out the x minus 1s, I've got a different function, because this original function is not defined where x is equal to 1 or minus 1, whereas if I cancel out the x minus 1s, it's a new function that's only defined where x is not equal to minus 1. So let's look at this function as it is given. So the question we're asked is what is happening to the values of y as x gets closer and closer to 1? Now, first thing to notice is if x is closer, if x is equal to 1, this function is undefined. So we can't look at the output value or the y value where x is equal to 1. So we, what we want to see is what happens when x gets very close to 1. So let's choose some x values. 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 0 0.99. We're choosing some x values and we're substituting it into the function to see what is happening to the y values. And you can pause the video and do it yourself, or you can see what we've got here. Similarly, for x values getting closer and closer to 1, but values of x that are greater than 1. So we're not looking at what happens at x equal to 1. We look at what happens as x gets very close to 1. And those are the y values that we find. So if we just look at... What's happening here, as x gets closer and closer to the value 1 from the negative side, meaning from values smaller than 1, my y value seems to be approaching 0.5. Similarly, as x gets closer and closer to 1 from values bigger than 1, yet again, my y value seems to be approaching 0.5. Now, let's look at the sketch of this graph. Now, there's a, this rational function has an asymptote at x equal to minus 1. But what happens here at x equal to 1 is there's an empty hole in the graph. It's not defined there. But everywhere around 1, this function is defined. And what we then notice from this table is as x gets closer and closer to the value 1 from both sides, my y value gets closer and closer to 0.5. And that is what we're busy looking at. So we don't want to see what happens at 1 because in this case, for this function, my function is not defined at 1. But around the x values of 1, something happens. Something specifically happens. The y values get closer and closer to 0 0.5. So we're not interested at what happens at 1, but we're interested at what happens around 1. So... Given a function f is defined where x is near to a number a, in this case it was the number 1, we write it the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l. So in the case we had now, let's just rewrite that, we had the limit as x approaches 1 of this function was the value 0 0.5. So the limit is equal to 0 0.5 if we can get the values, the y values, arbitrarily close to the 0 0.5, which we did. We can choose x values even closer to 1, and we'll get y values that are even closer to 0 0.5. So if we can get the y values arbitrarily close to 0 0.5 by taking x to be sufficiently close, but not equal to a. So we're looking at x values that get really, really, really close to that value a, but we're not looking at what happens at a. Now, it could be that my function is defined at a, but when we look at limits, we're not interested in what happens at the value. We're interested at what happens around the value. So that's what we're looking at. Now just note, even though f of x, where x, f of 1 is not equal to 0 0.5, f of 1 is undefined. 
but the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is 0.5. So it's equal to 0.5. Even though my y values will never get to 0.5, the limit value is 0.5. All right, now here's the precise definition of a limit. So just stand back, take a moment. Intuitively, we can see what a limit means. So intuitively, we're trying to see if the y values get very, very close to an x value or to a specific value as the x values get close to another value. But now the precise definition is as follows. Let f be a function defined on some open interval that contains the number a except possibly at a itself, so f does not have to be defined at a, like we saw in this example, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x is the number l. So in this case, we had 0.5. Now here's where the technical aspect comes in. If for every epsilon greater than 0, there is a number delta greater than 0, such that if the distance between x and a is less than delta, then the distance between f and x and l is less than epsilon. So what we're saying with this formal definition is what we said here. The values of f of x can be, get arbitrarily close to l by taking x sufficiently close to a. Now, this intuitive definition that we started off with, we, here we have the precise definition. At the end of this playlist, I'm going to do some examples using the precise definition. But for now, we're going to stick to the intuitive de definition, the explanation, and we'll get to the formal precise definition right at the end.